Challenge accepted. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Sermon number 14 in our series in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. And we're in a section in chapter, actually it really started in chapter 4, where now we're in like a section, sorry, I, y'all try to remind me and I still forget. I get rambling, forget to turn on my mic. The problem is I either turn it on and sometimes I don't turn it off. Like I'll, I'll use it when I worship in the morning and then we're over here singing and I'm like, I'll go with Jesus any. And everybody's like, what is all that noise? And I'm like, not carrying a tune, so I always forget something. <laughs> Anywho, we're in a section in the book of Ecclesiastes that is very proverb-like. And I mean proverb-like, if you've read Proverbs, it seems kind of disconnected. It's just kind of random thoughts, but it is very connected. Uh, The last thing we talked about out of the book of Ecclesiastes last week uh, was listening. Or not listening, not talking. Listening was right before that. So Solomon's got this train of thought. Don't be a lone wolf, if you remember that one. You need people around you. Spouse, children, church members. Family and friends, God made us, think of a good word, people that need community. I was going to say communal people, but it sounds like a toilet to me, and it just, <laughs> whether it's right or not, it just didn't seem right. God likes community and communal toilets, and it just, anyways, uh, so don't be a lone wolf. You need other people, and then once you get the right people around you, listen. Even if they're under your authority, You ought to listen because you're going to learn something. You're going to be a better person. You're going to be happier by listening. I've learned I'm a much happier husband when I listen to what my wife tells me. Amen. I listen to her, and all of a sudden, my life gets better. I don't know how that works. I haven't tested this out very often. I believe I'll be a better pastor if I listen more. (laughs) I'm working on it. And then the next message was the opposite of, or not the opposite, it goes in the same vein. Listen, but don't talk as much. Specifically at the house of God is what he was talking about. But we took that principle in all of life. Um, We get ourselves in trouble when we run our mouths too much. That was last week's message. You can go back and listen to those. And so now, this does have to do with talking. I'll explain in a a minute. But let's go ahead and read Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 8. Let's stand together. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, just verse 8. One verse. One verse and we'll be done. If thou seest the oppression of the poor... And violent perverting of judgment, and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter. For he that is higher than the highest regardeth. Just paying attention. And there be higher than they. Meaning one day they're going to have to answer to ultimately to God. Amen. Okay? So he's talking about government. Uh, really, this is about government in a lot of ways. Now we're going to apply it to some other ways, but really he's talking about government. So let's pray and I'll give you the title. Dear Heavenly Father, bless this time in your word. Help me to uh, preach your word effectively. Uh, empty me of self and the Holy Spirit. Challenge us today with the truth of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. <clears throat> Titled it, God's Answer to Big Government. God's answer to big government. I'm not usually big on, uh, on uh, like posting titles, but I was like, I might get some attention if I posted that title. Yeah. God's answer to big government. Big government is a term referring to government or the public sector that is considered excessively large or unconstitutionally involved in certain areas of public policy or the private sector. So that's what big government means. And uh, let me be very clear. We're treading on dangerous ground today. When I was growing up, I always heard this saying, you probably heard it too, two things you don't talk about, your religion or politics, right? Is that what you heard that too? I remember hearing, my mom still warns me with my papa, don't, don't talk religion or politics. I'm like, I'll talk both, I don't care, I ain't scared. Anyways, uh, those two things we're not supposed to discuss, and that's what this message is about. Religion and politics. Now, again, we don't really believe in religion. We believe in a relationship, but for simplicity. So we're in a dangerous, we're, we're, we're in a dangerous place today. And uh, it's probably a bad idea if I, if I talk too much because I'll get myself in trouble. <laughs> Today, what I, what I want to help us with is God's answer to big government. What do we do in a, uh, in a society where we, where we can look around and see that government's kind of overstepping? You know, they're talking about the COVID restrictions again and mask mandates. And you're sitting there going, I participated in the first one and it stunk. I don't really want to play the sequel. I don't care if monkeypox and, and malaria are having a picnic on my front yard. I'm going out there and having a hot dog at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, 
Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not playing the games. And, and, and by the way, to each their own. If you say, hey, I, I, I did the risk and I know people. I, I, my old youth pastor right now, his family's battling COVID again or whatever they do have. And so I understand sickness is real. It's just I, I never thought it's the government's job to tell us how we ought to handle what's going on in the world. If at 30 years old and in good health, I want to challenge the world and take it on and say, bring it, then that should be on me. That's the, that's the idea. And so what do we do in this society? Uh, where here's a, new, here's a new one. The governor of New Mexico, and I'm, I'm current on New Mexico stuff as well as Colorado because I love New Mexico and that's where I'm still, uh, I still got a license there. The governor of New Mexico just canceled the Second Amendment in the, state of, in, in the city of Albuquerque. I don't even know how you do that. So I've been trying to keep up with it, but basically it's for the safety of people. It's very much similar to COVID where they say, well, for the safety of everyone, we're going to make you do this. And now it's gotten so bad that she's saying, well, for the safety of everyone, nobody can have guns. And I'm sitting there thinking, if this is happening in the state that is right to our south, it might give our state an idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do we do in these situations? What do we do with government? What do we do? And stick with me, even if you're like, I don't care about politics. That's cool. I don't really either. Well, I'm going to try to slap you over the head with some real truth at the end because politics is all fake. Well, first off, let me, let me just, what does this have to do with l- listening and talking and those things that we've been talking about the last few weeks? There's almost no area in life where people talk more, listen less, and do less than with politics. If I had a dollar for every time somebody complained about a politician or a law or a rule, I wouldn't be a pastor today. I'd be retired and <laughs> somewhere in the Poconos or something. I don't know, just enjoying life. Because it seems like from people that don't even vote, you know what I mean? Like, like I, we would be fine. So there's a, there, there's a lot of talk and a lot of uh, not listening that is involved in our politics. So here's just a few principles from this verse. The verse is very simple, so it'll take us just a minute to get through it, and then we should be done pretty fast, okay? All right, so... Let me make sure like, I get the first principle. The, the rest I'll, I'll say, but this one I want to be very clear on. Here's the first principle. Make sure it's true. Make sure it's true. You say, how did you get that out of the text? Look back at, at verse number 8. If thou seest the oppression of the, of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province. What is he saying there? If you see it. No, Solomon did not say, well, if you hear about it, if you, if you, catch, a, if you catch a wind that they're going to do... If you, if you get suspicious that maybe they're possibly, then, he says, if you see it with your own eyes. Because, hang on, this is important in politics. We get really worked up about things we don't even know if it's true. That's true. Uh, I'm going to give an example that's not politics. Because, again, if I talk too much about politics, I'm going to get myself in trouble. Uh, when, when, when Holly wrecked my truck and... Uh, <laughs> moment of silence. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When Holly wrecked my truck, uh, we, when they finally were evaluating it and started going through the process of what it would cost to fix it, well, it's thinking technology. They, they, they send us uh, in this portal thing that we've access to, basically the quote of what it would take to fix the truck. And I didn't know this, but they just stopped doing the quote once it succeeded the, what they view as the amount the truck is worth, right? And so they stopped with like half the truck, and then they send that to us. So I'm like, all night, now it's closing time, it's like 8 o'clock at night, I'm seeing this thing, and I'm just worked up. Because here's what I'm seeing. Here's the damages we say we're going to fix, and I'm like, what about this, and what about this, and what about this, and this is why somebody should be out here. And I was, just, I was mad, I was fuming. The next day they call me and tell me, yeah, it's totaled. But it didn't say it in that. And I didn't, I didn't know what they were doing, but I was really frustrated. I mean, I was frustrated. I'd talk to my parents. I'd talk to her parents. I'd talk to her. I'd been ranting and raving. I'd been kicking and screaming. I was just frustrated uh, that they had missed something. And the reality was, if I'd have just waited until I got the final thing, I would have seen it's totaled. They're gonna, here's the amount. You know, and it would have been, at that point, we can debate the amount of the truck, but it was done. And because I didn't have all the information, I was, I was worrying myself. Literally, I was stressing and getting mad over nothing. I don't know what my blood pressure was like that night, but it was not good for nothing, for nothing, because they're going to call me the next morning and say, yeah, it's total. Don't worry about it. Where I'm sitting here, I've now made a list of all the things that they have not fixed. I sat down and I'm like, I'm like, they didn't talk about fixing this or fixing this or fixing this or fixing this. And what about here? And what about this? And they didn't talk about this. And those are aftermarket nerve parts. And those are not cheap. And I got this. I know this is this much. And I was, ah, and I didn't know. Some of y'all that way with, with the government. Let me use something old. Did you hear? <laughs> Obama was born in Kenya. <laughs> it was on Fox News. I'm serious. <laughs> Newsflash. 
Fox News lies too. Now, I don't know if he is, but do you know that he was from Kenya? Were you there? Did you see his birth certificate? Then why are you worked up about it? Well, I heard. Here's what I heard the government's going to do. You just wait. 2024 is going to be the worst year yet for us. Here's what's really happening in elections. So and so and so and so are doing it. You don't even know. You just heard. And you're all worked up. And you're all frustrated. And you're all mad about something you don't even know. So principle number one, make sure it's true. Once you know it's true, then get frustrated. <laughs> no, then, no then here, here, here's what the next principle is. Get involved. Get involved. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and the violent perverting judge. Let me define some of these terms. I have it in here, but I didn't define it. Or I thought I defined it. Maybe I can't find it. <laughs> that I defined it. Yeah, there's a lot of definitions in here. You kind of know. Violent perverting and judgment of justice. Um, not, o- not only is there oppression of poor. Uh, let, me, let me try to give an example of this. Uh, Social Security. If you're on, who here is collecting your Social Security now? You should. There's quite a, there should be some. Great. How many of you have got a substantial raise in Social Security in the last few years? Substantial? Oh, well, good. Compared to the raises that Congress is giving themselves out of Social Security. Oh, no right. Right. Okay, now you're seeing what I'm saying. That's the oppression of the, of the poor. Yeah. Social Security is for the age that is at a point where, first off, you've been putting into the system for, right. Lord willing, however long you've been working. And at this point, you need it. And then what they're giving themselves, these raises, when they already make six figures a year to... to no, I'm not sure what they do. I'm not going to actually act like I know. But then... They, they're up for a raise every two years and they're bumping themselves up and then American citizens that some of them live off of this are getting none of it over or, or no raises and stuff. That's a, that'd be an example maybe of oppression of poor. Uh, that just sounds like government right there to me. It can be a violent perverting of ju- uh, judgment and justice. It, it's where they pervert what's right. They're distorting what's right. The Second Amendment, let me, let me talk about this because I just brought it up with New Mexico. The Second Amendment was not an amendment about hunting. Why do you need a, a, a semi-automatic rifle for deer hunting? Because I'm a bad shot. What about it? That's not the point, though. The reality is it was never written for that. It was so that if government ever tries to overstep themselves, the people can be the militia that fights back, i.e. what America did to Britain. Amen. And they, they, now the, the effort, and, and if you don't care about guns, that's fine. It's not, it really isn't about that. It's the, it's the fact we should have the right to freedom of speech, freedom to arm ourselves. Those things are important, and those two amendments are under attack like nothing else. Why? Because if they can silence us and keep us from fighting back, then we have no idea of doing anything. We can't do anything but pray to God about it, which, by the way, is not nothing. That's a big thing. But I still like to have my own gun if I, if I can. But that is a... A violent perverting of judgment and justice so they can do whatever they want to us later. He gets very specific here. He talks about um, the local province. I find it, it, it it's frustrating that so many people get worked up for a presidential election when I know they affect us, but for the most part, they're not like, like they're not great. Now, I say that lately, it seems like the president really can affect us like nothing else. But I, for years, it seemed like whoever's in the office didn't really change my daily life. But you ought to care even more specifically about what's happening right here in Teller County and Park County and wherever you live. You ought to care a lot about right here. This is what's really going to affect how you live more so than Washington. And so he's very he's he's telling us get involved here. Let me let me keep reading. Marvel not at the matter. He did not say, don't do anything about it. He's saying, just don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. You need to get involved in what's going on. You need to be out there to see what's happening. The only way you're going to know. Well, you just said we got to know for sure. Well, then get out there and know for sure. Hear it from the horse's mouth. If the, if the politician says they're doing X, Y, or Z, you know for sure. If Fox News doesn't exactly quote them, or CNN doesn't quote them, or M- M- MSNBC, whatever, the little, 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 if they don't quote them or show you a video of them saying what they're saying, they're saying, then don't worry about it. But once you get facts, get involved. Make sure you're active in it. Make sure you're participating. Make sure you're fighting back in, when it's appropriate. I'm not saying... I don't care. Get violent if you have to, I suppose. For the sake of freedom. Third principle here. Marvel not at the matter. Can we not be shocked? Here's, what, here's, here's really what Solomon's telling us. Americans, if he, was, if he was talking to Americans, stop saying, I just can't believe what our gov- who our president is. I can't believe where our government's headed. I can't believe what our government's doing. Stop saying that. Don't marvel at it. 
Like, but this is, this is, this is ridiculous. If you'd have, yeah, you're, you're a young pastor, but if you'd have been around 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, you'd know this is ridiculous. I know, but he's saying marvel not because it's a, it's a nation of sinners run by sinners, most of which who don't have the Holy Spirit guiding and directing their lives. Why should you be surprised when it goes ugly? Why should So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Next principle, we're going to keep moving because I told you it's going to be fast and y'all are dragging it out. What are y'all doing? For he that is higher than the highest regardeth. Now, this is specifically talking about government. Um, there's people over our mayors that are and our governors. You know, our governor can do whatever she wants. If she wasn't Democrat and I didn't think she was in with Biden, I think it'd already be shut down. Um, or I'm talking about New Mexico's with the amendment. Ours is a male polis. Although I'm telling you, if, if he sees that he get that somebody's going to get away with it, I'm worried what that do, does for us. The president can always say uh, no. <laughs> A judge can get up and say, no, that's not constitutional. It's not right. There is those higher than high. But also, this is, this is directly, and he goes into speaking more about it. God cares. Highest of the high regardeth, knows. God knows. He knows what we're facing. Pastor, it's just, America's just not what I grew up in. This is not what I know. I don't know what to do anymore. I just think, I'm just going to flee to Canada. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise that because they already don't have guns. You if you're looking for gun rights, you've already lost them if you head north. <laughs> Go south. You've got a lot more guns there. You can get a hold of them a lot easier, too, if that's really your idea. But I'm not advocating that either because uh, you may not uh, speak Spanish. So, uh, But God knows. God's not surprised. He knew that he put us in this time to deal with this. I always try to keep that in mind. That God knew that in 1992 he was going to have a man born that was going to grow up and that was going to pastor this church in, from 2019 to whenever, and, and that in those times, the county he lived in and the state he lived in, that they were going to face X, Y, and Z, and he knew at that time that you were still going to be alive. You say, well, I'm old and I'm almost out of it. He knew you're still going to be here and have to face it. You say, man, I'm worried about my kids. I'm not necessarily worried about me, but where's it going to go? He knew that he needed to put you in their lives and he needed to, they needed to have a church and they needed the Word of God and that he prepared. He knows all of this. He knows. That's kind of the simple principle. He knows. And then the last one right out of verse 8. And there be higher than they. Here's what that means. One day they're going to answer to the ultimate power, Him. Well, you see this oppression? You see it with your own eyes? You know? Well, get involved. But don't worry. Don't get surprised. God sees what's going on. And one day God's going to do something about it. Amen. So when it comes to politics, here it is. Ready? Here's the summary of everything. We're already summarizing and then we're going to be done. Well, kind of. <laughs> Be involved in politics, especially in our province. Care about our local area. Next, don't be just all talk. All right? Don't take offense to things you're not certain of. God cares about what is taking place and will deal with it one day. That's kind of the summary of it. Now, nowhere does it actually say in this verse government. Now, we know we're talking about government because we're talking about powers and provinces and higher powers. and So we're talking about a level of governments. But truly, this is speaking of just... Abuse of authority in general. How do, you, how do you handle abuse of authority in general? Which means that the application of this, in case you're saying, well, I don't really care about government, and I'm just going to, you know, I, I got my don't tread on me flag and come and take it shirt, and I got my guns and I'm ready for whatever. And amen, good for you. I'm, out, I'm behind you. I'm with you. I got my guns too. Let's have a good time. But what about something that you might care about? This could easily apply to marriages, in particular to the ladies, that maybe your husband's not, not the husband he's supposed to be. Maybe he's kind of oppressive, or maybe he's a jerk behind scenes. These very same principles apply. Here we go. Ready? Be involved. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, don't just shut everything out every time your husband's being a jerk. That's not going to fix the problem. Here's an example. You're driving down the street, start hearing some knocking in your engine, turning up the radio and ignoring it never fixes it. <laughs> Hasn't for me yet. I don't hear anything, so I must all be fine. Just because you close your eyes and put your head in the sand, ladies, doesn't mean it's going to fix your marriage. Be involved in trying to fix it. Yeah, that may be confrontational and it may be uncomfortable. Um, but if there's a problem in your marriage, are you involved? Don't just be all talk. You tell me everyone else, if you telling everybody else about your problem doesn't actually help the problem. So that's the real problem. Like with politics, and this goes back into our last message, don't just be all talk about it. Well, I posted on Facebook the kind of jerk my husband is. Well, then you're an idiot. I'm going to say that very nicely, but you're an idiot. Well, he was a jerk. No, I'm with you. I agree. He's an idiot and he's a jerk. But you're an idiot because you posted online. Because that's not going to do anything. 
I've had people call me after they posted all kinds of stuff online, saying they're going to get a divorce, then come to me two months later and say they reconciled and they're going to stay married. I'm like, well, guess what? Now everybody else thinks you guys are idiots. Because either A, they think you're an idiot now because you're staying with an idiot. <laughs> or B, they think he's so abusive to you that you're going to stay in this relationship out of just pure abuse and they don't know what's, what you're doing. They're trying to get me to get involved now. And I don't want to be involved. <laughs> Next, don't take offense to things you're not certain of. Well, I just know what he was thinking when he said X, Y, and Z. You have something to read brains? Can I borrow that? I could really use that sometimes because I totally miss what some people are thinking. You don't know what he's thinking. Well, you don't know, Pastor. He said, I don't care, but really what he's saying. No, 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 no. You don't know. Well, I just know it. I had a dream once, and I'm telling you. (laughs) If you don't know it's true... Don't get all worked up about it. Well, I just suspect that he's... So ruin your marriage out of suspicion. Well, I just think he's... Ruin your marriage because you think. Why don't you just ask him? Men are pretty clear, you see. I mean, we're slow. And you have to... T- slow and direct words work for us. I told Holly when he got home with the baby, I said, whatever you need me to do, don't, don't try to su- like suggest or you know, around the corner. I'm like, you got to just say... Babe, do X. When we go to bed at night, every night I'm like, if you need me to wake up, don't just think I'm sleeping through it on purpose. You got to say, wake up. Very clearly. Babe, wake up. Do X. Because if you don't tell me that, I'm going to assume you hear the cry and you're going to feed her. Or I just didn't wake up anyway. You got to be clear. Ladies, be clear. Don't just go off what you think. And then, understand, God cares. God cares about your marriage. Well... My spouse. God cares about your marriage. He, he, he'll take care of it. And here's the best part. If your husband is a jerk to you for 50 years, an oppressive for 50 years plus, and you die married but kind of unhappy and you're miserable with him, one day he will stand before God for all of that. There is a higher than high. One day I'm going to have to stand before God and answer for the kind of dad I've been, for the kind of husband I've been. We'll get into pastor and stuff later. later but he'll answer to God. Don't you worry about that. God knows. Okay, that same, those same principles, uh, guess what they also apply to? Your job. Maybe some of you have a jerk for a boss. Maybe some of you are the jerk of a boss. Yeah. <laughs> same principle. Get involved. Oh, well, my job, it's all politics and nepotism and who you know and what you know. That's usually an excuse for laziness. That's what every, Well, I would get a raise, but it's all nepotism here. You got to... You get a raise if you got to work, I don't know, five minutes before you're supposed to clock in and stayed, I don't know, till you're supposed to clock out. It used to drive me nuts. At dealing with teenagers, this happens with teenagers all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to teenagers and said, well, I'd play that sport, but the coach, he just, he only ever plays so-and-so. I'm like, you didn't play because you got two left feet and your eyes are crossed. That's why you ain't playing. He, he likes winners. That's why you're not playing. Don't blame it on something else. Get involved. Stay involved. Uh... Don't be all talk. You know what? I've known about any job I've worked, there's plenty of people complaining about the job, about things about the job. That doesn't help anything. It doesn't. Did you hear what they're talking about taking away from our insurance? Dental? We ain't going to get dental? I got to lose my hair at this job out of stress, but I can't get dental? Everybody's upset about the dental. You don't need to complain about it. Don't be all talk. It doesn't help. Don't take offense to things you're not sure of. I know why I didn't get that raise. You know why I gave it to her? She dresses seductively. And I just don't. Because I'm a dude. Because <laughs> when I tried, he told me to buy my shirt. <laughs> Unless you know for sure that he gave that raise to that person for that specific... Don't worry about it. If, it's, if you don't know the facts, who cares? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <sighs> then understand God cares. God wants you to thrive in your workplace. He does. You gotta, God's... By the way, let me be very clear. No jobs are perfect and everything. You know, there's, there's really a movement now about toxic work environments and it's driving me nuts because the reality is all work environments are hard. It's just the reality of no matter what it is. And people are like, oh, I just, working here was my dream and I got here and my boss sometimes is mean to me. And I'm like, oh, you 
Gen my generation, you idiots. Anyways, that's what happens when you give everybody participation trophies. And, and, and they expect me to work 40 hours a week. And I'm losing my hair. And You know what? God cares. Work is work. God knew you were going to have to work. God cares about your workplace. Trust that He's going to get you through it. Even if, I've, if, if toxic work environments are real, then I've worked some really toxic ones. If you've ever been on a drilling rig and had a dude with two fingers call you every cuss word in the book and tell you that you were... You, I won't say the things you said I was more useless in. Then you really know tough work environments. It doesn't... God knows. But what I knew is God gave me the money to pay for college right there, even though I had to deal with toxic work environments. You can tell I'm not really big on that. Anyways... <laughs> God knows. But then also, one day they'll answer for it. If your boss is unjust and just cruel and mean and maybe he comes to work inebriated, maybe he comes to work and he's abusive and whatever it is, and they're, even you know it's fact, one day he'll answer for that. Now, he's going to have some bigger sins that most likely, if he's not saved, he'll be going to hell thinking of some bigger things than just going to work inebriated or being a jerk to you. But God knows. God cares. How about this one? I, I think these principles apply right here to the local New Testament church. Be involved. Remember, he's talking about province. The, the, care about what's right here in your... There's nothing more local than this. Local church. Be involved. Local. I'm going to keep saying that because it's important. Well, the universal church... How much, how much, how much money was, did the universal church send to missionaries last year? How many tracts did they give out last year? Uh, it's amazing when missionaries want money, they always come to a local church. Even if they're universal, they still <laughs> find a local one, huh? They're not just universal... Uh, anyways, sorry. It's a local church. Don't just be all talk. So get involved, but don't just be all talk. <laughs> I didn't like the way we did First Responders Day. I think we should have done this, and I think the food should have been this, and I think we should have done this. Where were you? No, where were you? You didn't come talk to me about it, because I didn't. Now, if, if you did talk to me and I just didn't listen, that's maybe a problem you have with me, but I, odds are I'm listening to any suggestions I got. Now, some of y'all are nice enough to say, hey, pastor's got it. And praise the Lord, you give me that kind of trust. I, I'm thankful. I, I do not take that lightly that you guys, if you don't say anything, you understand, hey, pastor, he, he'll, he'll get it. Thank you, if you trust me that way. If you don't, where are you at? You could have smoked meat all day yesterday. I, we'll pay for it. You got it. You can do it. Well, I just don't like pork. I think we should have done brisket. Okay, well, then you do. We'll pay for what we would have paid for, and then you raise the rest of the money for the brisket. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not a big potato salad fan, so... Well, then you make mashed potatoes and you bring them. And then we'll have mashed potatoes and not potato salad. But everybody's all talk. Oh, well, I really... I still can't believe there's not a flag out there. By the way, I was thinking that this week. I was like, son of a gun, I forgot to get that again. <laughs> wow, that's just ridiculous. Where are you at? Do you need access to, to me to get to the flagpole? You do know it's open all the time. <laughs> Let me, let me say it even further. It's lit all the time. <laughs> well, I really, I really disagree with something that you're doing. Well, that, if you're not involved, then I don't really care. No, if you're involved, I'm going to take your advice. But if you're not involved, I don't care. I don't care. Why would I care about somebody who's not involved, what they think? You're not even here to know what's going on. Don't take offense to things you're not certain of. <laughs> I've gotten this before, and I still can't believe how people think this. I'm sick of your preaching. I know you're preaching right at me. I've gotten that before. I'm like, what was your name again? No, I know it. Hang on. You think my week starts with me getting on your Facebook page, which I don't have one, but I'm getting on yours so I can figure out all the dirt, so I can write a sermon about you and neglect all the other people here? Well, I just know that you're writing them at me. I don't know anything. I don't care. I, I usually just preach whatever God lays on my heart, and it's always fun to see how it affects people. Because I don't know what's going on in your life. That's why I don't have Facebook, because I don't want to know. Because I don't care about the frittata you had for breakfast on Wednesday. Don't take offense to things you don't know. Well, I heard Pastor did. Well, come talk to me, and if I, if I did it, then if it was something wrong, then take offense to it. I don't really like how you say stupid from the pulpit. I don't let my kids say it. I don't let my kids say it either. That leads us to the next one. Guess what? God cares. Obviously, He cares about His church. And one day, I may answer God and He may say, I don't like the way that you were saying stupid all the time from the pulpit. And you know what? Hang on. No, this is real. 
I'll answer for that. No, I'll answer for that. I'll stand before God for the decisions made for this entire church. Even if we voted on it. Guess what? That doesn't, I don't get to stand before God and say, well, 73% of the church voted and said we should do it, so that's why we did it. And they'll say, I put you there as the pastor to guide him. It shouldn't have been up for a vote in the first place. It was stupid. And then he'll say it to me and I'll be like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ultimately, one day, God will take care of it. And every decision, every message, everything I do, if you don't like it, I'm not saying leave the church. Because honestly, I don't think that's usually the best. Because usually what happens if you leave a church because of stu- little things, <laughs> dumb things, <laughs> Odds are, dumb things are happening at the next church because the pastor is still a dumb guy. <laughs> so I wouldn't advocate leaving, but let me just encourage you. You're not going to like everything I do. You're not going to like everything our church does. You're not going to agree with everything. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> Why do we put the words on the screen? I see where we're going. I see where we're going. <laughs> where? We're right here. It's hymnal. It's piano. It's piano. If we got a piano player, it'd be that piano, but it's piano. We're not going anywhere. Don't get upset about things that aren't true. Don't worry, God will take care of it. So, God's answer to big government is really God's answer for any injustice or problem with any authority. Be involved. Don't be all talk. Don't get worked up over things that you don't know are true. God cares. God knows. And everyone will answer to God one day. Here's the conclusion. You'll be much happier if you approach the oppressive authority God's way. I, uh, I, like to, I, li- I like things to be nice and clean. And I sometimes don't understand why everybody doesn't have that mindset. So I'll go either to someone's house and I'll see, like, why don't they mow that? Why don't they cut that? Why don't they trim that? Why don't they fix that? Why don't they fix that? Why isn't that cleaned? Why don't, it takes five minutes to vacuum. Why don't they do that? And I will, I will make myself sick and frustrated. if I, Everywhere I go, I think those thoughts all the time. You know what the most freeing thing is? Not my problem. <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? You get in somebody else's car and you're like, dude, it takes five minutes to pull the trash out of here. It's 30 seconds. Take it to the store, take it into the store with you. But you know what? Then I sit there and go, it's not my truck, I don't care. Not my van, I don't care. Walk in somebody's house, why would you paint it that color? <laughs> not my problem, I don't care. And because that I don't care I too, I'm a lot happier. Because I don't have to fix everything. I don't got to mow all the grass in the world. I don't got to trim all the trees. I don't got to vacuum all the things. I don't got to sweep under all the things. So it's free. When you stop worrying about what the government's doing here and what they're doing here and what's happening here and what's this and this and what they're saying and, and watching 18 hours of news a day because you're, I don't know, you're, you're like hurting yourself. I don't know. Uh, you're going to be so frustrated. You know what's great? When you free your mind and say, I'm going to be involved where it's appropriate to be involved in. By the way, that's like voting. It's like getting out there and being a part of your community, being a positive to it. Not being all talk where you talk about it, but you don't actually do anything. But you don't get worked up over things you don't even know are true. Aliens came down. And that's Trump. (laughs) I know it. That's why he talks the way he talks. God cares. God knows. And one day, everybody will answer him for it. I don't have to worry about it. What are you going to do if they take away our guns? God knows. God cares. One day everybody will answer to God for it. But what are you going to do? I'm going to sit back. I'm going to be involved. Keep voting the right way. Trying. It doesn't seem like there is the right way anymore. <laughs> if I'm being blunt, it's like, I'm, I'm going to get involved in the community. I don't know. I might be at a rally someday holding an AR. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I realize that I'm the face of everything the world fight, is fighting against. Like, I'm the face. I look like I'm one bald head away from hating everybody. (laughs) But I'm not just going to talk and complain about it because that does no good. I'm not going to get worked up about things that I don't know are true. Until somebody actually gets rid of the Second Amendment or gets rid... And by the way, I'm much more uh, uh, concerned about the First Amendment than the Second. Because the the Second Amendment, I'm very thankful for and I want. But the First Amendment is what allows me to do this. If I didn't have a gun, I still could do this. And this changes people's eternal destination. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So until those things are taken, then I'm not going to stress about it. Because God knows, God cares, and everyone will answer to God one day. God's answer for big government is God's answer for all injustice or problems with authority. 
you will be happier when you let him handle it. So, what do I do? Let him handle it. Don't let your blood pressure get too high. Don't get all worked up. Don't watch too much Fox, CNN, or MSNBC, or whatever, local, KOA, whatever you watch. Stop. <laughs> I advise that most of the time. I'm like, I tell people, it's good for my spirit, because you are what you think. And so I just don't watch news. That's why I are so happy. And let God take care of it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I realize the time we live in and the government and the oversteps and the overreaches and big government, it really is, it really is big government that we're facing now. And, and we've seen some serious overreaches of government in the last few years and, and maybe even a, an attempt to keep going with that. We ought to be involved. We ought to vote. We ought to, we ought to do what is right. But Lord, help us all to just turn our concern over to you. Because there is a, high, a higher power than the high power. There is somebody above the president. There is somebody above our government. And it's you. And one day they'll all answer to you. And you care. You haven't neglected us. You haven't forgot what we're going through. Help us to approach big government and life with this, the right attitude. All injustice in life, we should, we should approach it with the correct attitude. Thank you for this time together in your word. Thank you for this time together uh, here. Lord, I ask that you bless the invitation now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand.